Hey guys, my name is Jennifer and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here and stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. I'm so glad you're here. And today I have a new Bible review video. I've actually had this Bible for a few months and it has been on my list of um, Bibles to do a review on. And I'm finally getting to it. Um, I, you know, I've had life. I've had all the things going on. So let's dive in to this Bible and see what it has to offer. So as you can tell, this is the NIV Quest Study Bible. Um, this says the only question and answer study Bible. And it answers thousands of questions about the Bible. This is in the Comfort Print. NIV Lay Flat Edition. Let's flip on over to the back. All right, so some of the features, over 7,000 insightful notes arranged in a unique question and answer format. Nearly 350 articles to, that investigate the most asked questions about the Bible. You've got book introductions, article index, expanded subject index, single column scripture text, over 150 charts, timelines, and maps. There is a reading plan with three distinct tracks to follow. NIV Dictionary Concordance, 16 page full color map section, um, exclusive Zondervan NIV Comfort Print, print typeface, and 9.5 um, print size, 9.5 point print size. There's your actual font size. This is in the Teal Leather Soft. Retails for $74.99. I will tell you, I did not pay full price. I bought it off of christianbook.com. And I don't remember how much I paid for it, so I do apologize. So it does have the clamshell box, which I like. And here is the Bible. So let's move the box out of the way. This is a teal color. You have this silver floral design on it. This is the spine. And honestly, I'm gonna tell you, the um, camera and the lighting does not do the, um, the actual cover of the Bible justice, okay? It's very pretty. And you have the ISBN imprinted on there. It is silver gilding on the pages. All right, and let's dive in. Your paste down liner is this beautiful gray floral, if your paste down liner matters to you. And this is the leather soft. This is not a genuine leather or anything. Um, it's, I mean, it's very kind of flimsy, but you know, I mean, it is what it is. Again, I didn't pay a ton of money for it. You know, a lot of times when I buy Bibles, I really care more about what's on the inside than the cover, but the cover made a difference for me on this one. All right, so your gray paste down liner, your presentation page, and again, um, I did buy this a few months ago. I could go back and look at my order history on Christian Book to see when I actually ordered it, and I could put my date and my name. Um, NIV Quest Study Bible, your title page, another title page. Don't know why there's two, but whatever. All right, you have your copyright information over here, your table of contents right here, your alphabetical order of the books of the Bible, abbreviations of the book names, your introduction to the NIV Quest Study Bible. And this is probably gonna be important for you to read if you do actually get this Bible, is what makes this Bible distinctive. Um, and it says the NIV Quest Study Bible is like a press conference. There's a prepared statement, the text of the Bible. In this case, it's highly respected NIV version, the best-selling modern English translation, blah, blah, blah. After the text is presented, readers, like reporters at a press conference, address their most pressing questions to the spokesperson. In this Bible edition, the answers come from respected Bible scholars, pastors, and writers 
who provide interesting answers in an engaging style. Now, I'm gonna throw this out there. When you come to these questions, um, I may or may not agree theologically with their answers. That's okay, because if I know my theological grounding and what I believe, um, I, it's interesting to see other viewpoints. I'm just gonna leave it at that, okay? All right, so here are some of the specific features you'll find in this Bible. And I do like how they laid it out with visuals. You've got your book introductions and you'll see a visual of that. You've got timelines and maps, side column notes. So all of your notes are gonna be on the side column. Um, perplexing words and phrases, so you're going to find out some cultural context, reasonable cause, fair summations of controversial passages, explanations of particular types of writing, other passages that cover the same or similar events or topics, and then you have articles, index to subjects, dictionary concordance, indexes to maps and charts, reading plans, and obviously the Word of God. And I do love how they specifically say, far more important than any of the tools we've provided is the text itself, the Word of God. The Bible is a supernaturally powerful book, one that can be explained in simple terms to preschoolers and at the same time studied for a lifetime by scholars who never exhaust its profound truths. Whatever your situation, Whatever you need, we've up, we've we offer sorry this updated NIV Quest Study Bible with the hope and prayer that the power of God's word may penetrate and transform your heart and your life. So again, they know and understand that the word of God itself, the text itself of Scripture, is the most important thing. Um, you don't have to have all of the extra study helps or the questions that they've provided. That's just extra additional resources. So here's your acknowledgments, your contributors, um, Christianity Today. And I believe I did read somewhere that a lot of people from Christianity Today got together and came up with this stuff. So um, contributing editors, editorial assistants, managing editors, general editors. All right, here we have reading plans. Um, course one, Introduction to the Bible, and this is going to be a two-week commitment. Your goal is to survey basic biblical foundations. Okay, I kind of like that plan and process. Um, if you just want an overview and an introduction to the Bible, they lay it out. I mean, this is really cool. Two weeks on... Um, You've got one, you've got three different plans here, okay? You can do two weeks on the life and teachings of Jesus, two weeks on the life and teachings of Paul, two weeks on the Old Testament. Course two is a guided tour of the Bible. Time commitment, 180 days, six-ish months. The goal is is to understand the underlying story of the Bible. So you've got the plot unveiled and you go through different chapters of Genesis, the birthing of the nation. You go through Exodus, Leviticus, a couple chapters in Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, the Golden Age, 1 Samuel, a Psalm, Psalms, Second Samuel, some Chronicles, Second Samuel, Psalms, some Kings, some Proverbs, Song of Songs, Ecclesiastes. Then you have the Northern Kingdom, and I'm not going to keep going through all those. The Southern Kingdom, Starting Over, Cries of Pain, A Surprising Messiah, obviously bringing you into the New Testament, Responses to Jesus, Final Days, The Word Spreads, Paul's Legacy, Vital Letters. Okay, this is a really good reading plan. I really like how they have that divided. So, um, the, the reading plans right here, the way they have it divided and titled, totally worth it. Um, 
Again, your course one, your intro to the Bible, course two, a guided tour of the Bible. And I really like how they have the divisions of these titled right here. That's awesome. And then course three, every word in the Bible, time commitment. This one they have set out at three years. And all they did was just put um, your books of the Bible in each chapter with a little box so you could check it off. And you could do this at your own pace. You could go faster, you could go slower, totally up to you. But I really, really like the course one and the course two, the way they have that divided out. That's, I really like that, that's pretty good. All right, and there we finish up. All right, your overview of the Bible. You've got a summary of the Old Testament, and it starts out with the Pentateuch, Genesis through Deuteronomy. You've got each book listed, a little bit about what it's about, literally a summary, a couple sentences. The historical books, the poetical books, the prophetic books, and obviously there's a lot of the prophetic books. And then we get into your New Testament summary, the Gospels and Acts, the letters, Romans through Revelation. Um, so again, you've got your little summaries about each of them. And then you have your other letters, Hebrews, James, 1st, 2nd Peter, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, Jude, and Revelation. All right. Here's your preface. I'm not going to go through that. And then we get into the Old Testament. All right, and here is our first book intro. Um, I like, it's pretty concise. So why read this book? You have a little bit of information here, who wrote this book and when, a little bit here, what period of history does it cover? Why was it written? To whom was it written? And what to look for? And then you have a timeline. So again, nothing very deep it's very much an overview and summary. So depending on where you are in your spiritual walk, I mean, that's fine. That may be what you need. All right, here we go into the first part of our text. Right here in the lighter white gray columns, you have the actual scripture in the single column. I very much think that I prefer a single column text over a double column. That's just me. Everybody has their preferences. And in the blue columns, this is where you have your questions over on the sides. So you have a question, for example, why did God's spirit hover over the waters of the earth? Your scripture reference is Genesis 1 verse 2. And then you have the um, answer that they put on there. Okay, and then here is a map setting of Genesis. And then this is one of these questions that they talk about. Um, so these questions down in this part of the, the book, they, they call these the most frequently asked questions about the Bible. So for example, this one, Obviously, we're in Genesis, so we're talking about creation. Are these literal 24-hour days? You have your scripture reference, Genesis 1, 3 through 31. And then it goes through. They answer it. They give different scripture references. Um, and then, obviously, it says at the very end, we can only speculate about what some of the other things might have been at that time. So... Again, frequently asked questions, they try to answer them as much as they can based on all of the research, history, context, blah, 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 that they actually have. All right, moving on. Again, you have your questions, your scripture text, and one of the most frequently asked questions. This is, I love how they said, this is one of the top 100 most asked questions. Why are names important in the Bible? 
What can I learn from a list of names? Anybody else just get really tired of reading the genealogies and the family lines and the so-and-so begot so-and-so and the fact that they're so hard to answer, right? Like that, I just, it's, I, I get tired reading that. God put it in there for a reason. I know it's important. Historically, I need to know this information, but it's kind of difficult, especially trying to pronounce those names. So, what can I learn from a list of names? Why do I need to read that? What is it important about that list of names that I need to know and read? All right, again, one of the important questions. So these are very frequently put throughout this Bible. Again, we're only on Genesis chapter six and seven right here. So I'm just gonna start flipping through because again, the format of the text and what they've got going on does not change. All right, here is the first map that we see. Nations descended from Noah's sons. And they have it marked off right here with different colors. This is the one thing I don't like about the Bible is you have blues and grays. I've done this on other um, Bible reviews. I love a good full color Bible. And you're gonna see, um, I've done my NIV study Bible. Um, I think I've done another full color, but I have another full color Bible review coming up here shortly, okay? All right, so text, your questions, they have a little map, and this is talking about the Tower of Babel right here. And again, I'm not going to start going through these, um... But let's, here's one of the questions over here in the side text. What kind of priest was Melchizedek? And Melchizedek is found in Genesis chapter 14, verse 18. And it says, Melchizedek was a Canaanite priest king, one of the most intriguing persons in the Bible. We know very little about him, but the writer of Hebrews used him as a type of Christ, perhaps even as a pre-incarnate of Christ. He may illustrate that even in a pagan world, God can speak to sincere hearts. And there's other references on um, who was Melchizedek. See Hebrews 5, 6. And if Melchizedek was greater than Abraham, why did Abraham get the attention? Hebrews 7, 6 um, through 7. So there's other questions, and then they bring out um, other areas where Melchizedek was mentioned. And you would find that same type of information in any of these other questions if there's cross-references. And we're going to keep on flipping through. Again, the format is the same, but, um, I mean, some of these questions are really good. Why didn't Lot go to Abraham? What would make rain... What would make burning sulfur fall on the city? Obviously, we're talking about Sodom and Gomorrah. Why did God turn Lot's wife into a pillar of salt? How could Lot's daughters justify incest with their father? Um, just a lot of good questions. And some of these are maybe burning questions you have had your whole life. I don't know. All right, let's, let's keep on flipping because, again, the format is exactly the same. You're just going to start getting all of these questions and answers. Again, the, the color palette is the same. And I think regardless of the cover option you get, the color palette is going to be the same in the entire Bible. Now, I do like to look between Malachi and Matthew to see if they have anything on the intertestamental period. Um, my NIV study Bible does, which I absolutely love. All right, so here's Malachi. And again, y'all, I don't know if you, but I'm flipping through all of this Old Testament stuff and it is literally the same format. You have all these great burning questions that we all have. Um, these wonderful articles down here at the bottom of the top questions that people have in 
um, the Bible. All right, so here's Malachi again. Your book introduction, your timeline down here at the bottom. Again, your format is the same. All right, so here starts your New Testament. They do have a little bit of information on the intertestamental period from Malachi to Christ. They talk about the Persian period, the Hellenistic period, the Hasmonean period, and the Roman period, um, which is your timeline. They give a little bit about what's going on during each of those timelines. So that's not bad. That's it's a little bit of historical context for you to understand what's going on. And again, we understand that the intertestamental period, those 400 years of silence where there's not a prophet that is prophesying the word of God. And I can only imagine what the people were feeling and going through in those years of silence. They were probably wondering what in the world is ever going to happen. And then we start Matthew. Matthew. Let me go back to this intertestamental period. Um, I have my NIV study Bible right here, and I just want to show you the difference in the information of these two Bibles. And again, you're going to see the full color. All right, so here is where it starts. This is my NIV study Bible right here. And I've done a full review on this, and I will link it below. Um, and I'm sorry for the shaking of the camera, the way my um, mount is on the table. So these charts are, they look like they're identical. This is the NIV Quest Study Bible. This is the NIV Study Bible. So these charts, other than the color, the information is identical. Now, in the Quest Study Bible, you literally immediately turn the page and start in Matthew. In the NIV Study Bible, you have all this information on what's going on during the intertestamental period. You have maps, you have more charts, you have all these articles. And then another chart about the Maccabean through the Hasmonean period. You've got the kings, Jewish leaders, Ptolemaic kings. And then we start in with our New Testament chronology, turn the page, more, and then our New Testament. So depending on what level of information you want about that intertestamental period, this chart may just be exactly what you need, right? So again, the chart in both of these is the same. The NIV Quest, you literally turn the page and you start into Matthew. You have more information um, in the NIV Study Bible. So let me move that aside and let's get back to the Quest. Setting of the Gospels. Obviously, your text starts here. Um, first question, why give the genealogy of Jesus the Messiah? Um, there's more information. Why is Uriah's wife listed in the genealogy of Jesus? And who was Uriah's wife? Bathsheba. What's the significance of calling Jesus the Messiah? What's so special about the number 14? And that's Matthew 1, 17 that that's found. And that's just saying that there were 14 generations in all from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the exile to Babylon, and 14 from the exile to the Messiah. So if you do a lot of genealogies and like the numbers, the numerology in the Bible, and that some of this might be really good information for you if you haven't read this before. And again, um, this is one of the top 100 questions. How can we understand the Trinity? And again, the top 100 questions are marked like this on every one of them. Another top 100 question. Another top 100 question. Let's see, what was the last one? How can I tell if I have too much stuff? We're talking about material possessions here. All right. 
And again, flipping through, obviously, you're always going to have these side columns with questions. You don't always have your top frequently asked questions at the bottom. All right, so let's flip on through to the back of the book because, again, the format is the same page, I mean, book to book. So let's get to the end of Revelation. Here's the end of Revelation, and we start our study helps. So we have our table of weights and measures, prayers from the Bible, promises from the Bible, perspectives from the Bible, acknowledgments, index to scriptures, index to in-text maps, index to charts, dictionary concordance, index to color maps. There's your table of weights and measures. Prayers from the Bible. So I thought that was really cool. Um, if you're interested in studying prayer, what better place than to go straight to the Bible and see how people prayed in the Bible? Good place to look. And they've got, um, this is prayers in the Old Testament. Some prayers from the Psalms. So obviously this is not all inclusive. Prayers from the prophets, prayers of Jesus, prayers of the New Testament, prayers of Paul. Um... Prayers of praise to God, like doxologies, and prayers for blessings, benedictions. Nice. I like how they have those labeled like that. And then they obviously give you the scripture references. Promises from the Bible. God promises when you feel guilty, feel dejected, feel despair, are disappointed, are depressed, are persecuted, are anxious, are filled with longing, are sick are impatient, are confused, tempted, weak, afraid to obey when you are in need, when you're grieving, when you're suffering, when you fail, and when you doubt. These are very important promises from the Bible, and I think a lot of times we, we need to refer to charts like this with information. And again, this is one of the reasons why I like having multiple Bibles is because of the information in the back. The text itself is scripture. Like I, I have a plain Jane scripture. I do like the different study helps that are found in each of my different Bibles. Um, perspectives from the Bible. So what to read when the future seems hopeless. You are seeking God's direction. You need comfort. When others disagree with you, the world seems enticing, and there are so many. I'm not going to read all of them, but you have two pages, and obviously the scripture references, so there's multiple scripture references to go through. Acknowledgement index, so basically this is the bibliography information to who wrote the article, where was it found, that kind of information. Index to subjects. So, subject of abandonment, you've got your scripture references here. So, let's look at Psalm 10, 1 to see that one. Uh, there's Proverbs, Psalms, chapter 10, almost. I just want to see what it looks like. And I'm wondering if it's just one of these articles. Yep. Why does it sometimes seem like God is far away? Psalm 10, 1, that article, abandonment. So that is what these are referring to. These right here, okay? And you have all kinds of topical titles to go through. And they are all alphabetized for you. Which is good. Which is, I mean, hey, they're giving you, these are the, what you're going to find in the articles. That's great. And obviously, they include the scripture references, which is vital. All right, here's your index to charts and maps. Index to your charts. So, and these are your page numbers. So, the tabernacle furnishings. Let's go to page 120. There we go. That's what it's referring to. This um, chart, the tabernacle furnishings right here. All right, then we have our dictionary and concordance. So I'm not gonna go through that. 
And again, your dictionary concordance is based off of the NIV text because that's the version that this Bible is in, the NIV. I'm gonna flip to the back. All right, so this is your index to color maps which means these are your color maps. These are full color. I just wanna go through and show you. We have a decent amount of study helps back here. So this is your study helps section. Yes, I have some that are bigger, but I mean, that's a decent amount, um, which I like. All right, so let's go through the maps real quick and then we're gonna end this video. You have the world of the patriarchs, the Holy Land and Sinai, and really you should be looking at it like this. Okay, let's turn the Bible back. Exodus and the conquest of Canaan, land of the 12 tribes, which I love having the land of the 12 tribes and they kind of color code them and lay them out a little bit where it's easier to tell. And these are a slick, almost like a magazine page. I don't think they're full on cardstock like some maps. So the paper is a little bit thicker. I mean, you can tell just by doing that. Um, Kingdom of David and Solomon the kingdoms of Israel and Judah, prophets in Israel and Judah, Assyrian and Babylonian empires, Holy Land in the time of Jesus, Jerusalem in the time of Jesus, Jesus' ministry, apostles' early travels, Paul's missionary journeys. And again, this map is a full two-page spread versus this one, and these are single page spreads. So you do need to notate that. And then your last one is the Roman Empire, and it is best to go this way with this map. And it'll tell you it's color coded. So Roman Empire in the time of Julius Caesar, you have your timeline. Territory added by Augustus Caesar. Territory added by Trajan. Um, and then territory annexed temporarily by Rome. All right, then you have this blank page and then straight into your back paste down liners. And that is it. That is all I have on this review of the NIV Quest Study Bible. I hope that you found this review um, informative. I hope that you... Maybe saw some information you liked. If you saw something you didn't like, I apologize. Um, I do like this Bible. I'm very thankful that I purchased this Bible. I have not gone through all of the questions. I actually have pulled it out and used it for a couple things. Um, and I'm probably going to pull it out again here. Actually, today, I've, I've got to work on my Sunday school lesson for Sunday. So I will probably pull it out again. Y'all, I'm teaching on John 3, verses 1 through 21. So I get to hit John 3, 16. But can I tell you that even in the first three verses, like, it's just really cool because there are so many easy, practical applications um, that you're pulling. So I've got... A, Tons of notes I've already started making, but I'm, I'm very excited because these questions, as we're going through John 3, like, what does it mean to be born again? What does it mean to be born of water and the Spirit? How will the Son be like the snake in the wilderness? So these are questions and things um, that I will pull out, and I'm absolutely going to use this to help with my Sunday school lesson. I teach seventh grade girls. I have two co-teachers and this, this week is my week. So some of these I'm really going to pull out and use because it's practical, simple information for these seventh grade girls. Okay. Trying to really explain, um, and then provide practical application. So I will absolutely pull this Bible out. All right, guys, that is it. Again, I hope you found this review informative, helpful, all the things. Um, I would love to have you subscribe, like the video, comment. If you have any questions, I would love to answer those for you. But thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you, and I hope you have a joyful day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.